Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and what is a very overdue review of the QAV250, the Carbon Edition. This was sent to me by GetFPV Luminaire and uh, I always disclose when stuff's sent to me and I didn't have to pay for it, but it doesn't influence the outcome of my reviews. So here it is, it's the QAV250. As you can see, it's made from, it's got a carbon one piece bottom plate frame, so the arms do not bolt on. They are actually part of the frame. Now that has pluses and minuses. Uh, if you do break an arm, well, you're gonna have to replace that whole frame member there. But on the plus side, it makes for a very stiff quad. And I mean, look at the, the quality of that carbon is excellent. The thickness is, I think it's uh, three millimeters. And the design is such that they're, you know, it is pretty damn strong. I don't think I've seen any of these carbon frames broken. I'm sure somebody's broken one and they will put a comment saying, I broke one. Uh, but no, I think these carbon frames are pretty damn strong. So that's gonna be a big bonus. Now. On this particular one, uh, if uh, GetFPV sent it to me with the 600 TV line camera, a FreeSky 8XR receiver, and it had a CC3D board in it originally, and I, I played around with the CC3D, but I just could never get the damn thing feeling comfortable. I mean, I'm, I haven't done anything before with the CC3D. I'm a bit of a naze guy, so I thought, well, it would be a bit unfair to compare the handling of this mini quad with the others if it was using a different flight controller. So I put a Naze32 board in there. So I'm comparing apples with apples. So it's really just the frame, the motors and so forth that we're comparing, not the actual flight controller. And um, I also made another modification here. Now normally the battery sits in the back here on this little shelf that's provided for the, the purpose of. I decided to put my battery on top because one of the concerns I had was that due to the design, if you have the battery in this compartment at the back here, and you have a front-on crash, it slides forward and takes out the flight controller to break off these little posts. Or, in the case of a Naze 32, there's a little micro USB connector in there which will get pushed off the board. And it's not a desirable thing. It also meant that I could put my, if I put the battery somewhere else, I could put my video transmitter underneath. Now they did provide an immersion 600 milliwatt, but I've got the Skyzone goggles. They don't play well with the immersion 600 milliwatt all the time. So I threw in a, a generic one of these Chinese 400 milliwatt transmitters. They're pretty common. Um, I've used them before, they work really well. So I just threw that and stuck it underneath and that meant that um, I could, you know, I didn't have to worry about anything else in there because the battery I put on the top. Now, if you look at why I might've put the battery on top, with the battery hanging out the back here, you're pretty limited in the size and capacity of battery you can use because it's way behind the center of gravity. The CG should be right here, right in the middle of the frame. That makes for best handling. Now, obviously I don't have a battery on the back and mine still balances perfectly in the midpoint. So. Hmm. If I'd stuck the battery on the back, it would have been a bit tail heavy. That makes them inclined to spin out if you're doing really sharp, aggressive turns. Because too much weight on the back is like a big, you know, centrifugal force. It just swings around. So I opted to put the battery on top. And actually, I've got to say one big plus. These battery straps are brilliant. These are the Lumineer battery straps. They're kind of slightly well, they're rubberized and they really grip the battery well. I'm most impressed with those. Um, they're worth buying on their own, actually. Much better than just regular old Velcro strip. Love it. Um, now, as I say, the, um, the battery on top means I can put anything from a 2200 down to a 1300, which is what I'm running now. Otherwise, if you put a 2200 on the back of this thing, I think it would handle like a dog if you stuck it under there. It'd just be too heavy, too heavy. And you might need a bit more capacity than you think, because this quad comes with the Lumineer 2206 motors, I think 2350kV. And to be honest, they're really not that peppy. I mean, they don't really produce a hell of a lot of power with the standard gem fan, uh, 5.3 gem fans. You know, these, these props here that we're all so used to, these little flexi gem fans. Put those on here, and to be honest, the performance is quite lackluster. It's really quite disappointing with those props on. However, you'll notice I've got the 5x4.5 bullnose HQ props on. With these props on, it's a rocket ship, but but as you will have seen in my test of these props, these do draw a lot of power out of your motor, and that means a lot of power comes out of the battery. I actually puffed a Nanotech, a 1300 Nanotech 45C or whatever they are, you know, the, the top spec, 1300 Nanospecs, I puffed one because I ran this hard, and it just drew too much current. The battery came down hot, it was puffed. So beware that you can suck a lot of power with these props. And with a 1300, even the high C ones might not be up to the task particularly well. Um, so I don't think these motors are very efficient either, because uh, even with the, with the 5.3s on, you've got to use full throttle so often that the battery doesn't last all that long. I must admit I get about five minutes, which isn't bad, but given the relatively low performance, five minutes is not really impressive. With the bull nose props on, I get about three and a half minutes of really exciting fun, and if I really want to push it, maybe four minutes. So, you know, really would do with a better battery. I could put a 1500 on here, 
because I've got it on the top, wouldn't affect the CG, I may do that. There may be a better way to run this little thing. Now they do have a Mobius platform you can put on here with a little rubber isolation mounts, but I just have some foam rubber here. A little bit of Velcro just to hold the camera there, and a Velcro lap, a strap, and that holds it in very well. I don't get very much in the way of Jello. I'll show you some footage I took from this one fairly shortly, and you'll be able to see that the footage is not bad. Um, it really does, you know, you don't really need a Mobius platform as such. This works really well, and it's simple, simple quick, easy, and light. Um, flight camera, uh, this is one of the complaints I've got. It, it bolts onto this carbon plate here, and it bolts by simply running some bolts through, it's a bit hard to see with the props in the way, uh, running some bolts through the plate and then onto the PC board, so it pulls it forward against this plate. I'm not greatly fussed by that actually, not impressed by that because for a start it puts a bit of stress on the circuit board because you've got these bolts here pulling on the edges and actually there's a little bit of a bow in the board, even though I didn't talk up the bolts very tightly when I um, made some changes. Um, and you can't change the angle of the camera. See, the camera is always going to be pointing, just move this prop out of the way, it's always going to be pointing dead ahead. Um, and as people who fly these mini quads know, when you're going fast, you're flying with quite an angle on. So all you get to see is the ground, even with a wide angle lens. But increasingly, a number of quads, mini quads are providing the ability to angle the camera up so you can actually see the ground while you're still moving at great speed. And having said that, Lumineer are addressing a lot of these problems right now because they have announced arm extension and motor tilt kits which will not only extend the arm so you can use six inch props which will be much better in terms of efficiency but also angle and motors forward so when you're flying the quad won't need to have so much angle on it itself because the props are already angled that will address that issue so one of the good things about this is there is an upgrade path this isn't just a frame you buy and then use and then get tired of you can upgrade it longer arms motor tilt that's brilliant. Um, so in that regard, it's probably a good frame to start with because you've got somewhere to go once you're feeling comfortable with it. You can extend the capabilities of it simply by some, some upgrades. Um, I know that the blackout offers longer arms too. You can upgrade the blackout. Um, so yeah, it, it's the way to go. If you're buying a frame, make sure it does have an upgrade path. That's really important. Now, um, you'll notice this one's got some burn marks on this connector and on this post here at the back. What's going on there? Well. I had a bit of a fire in this one actually. What happened was one of the downsides of having your battery on the top was that in a crash the battery lead somehow shorted out to this frame member here and that caused the battery to get really hot. It actually caused the carbon here to get really really, it all sort of went fluffy and uh, the, the resin burnt out just left the fibres but look at the nice repair job I've done there. All I did was I whipped some CA into there hit it with some kicker then filed it back and well, it's just like new. Brilliant. It's a testimony to the quality of the carbon that they're using in this frame. It's really high quality carbon fiber. So I don't expect to see these arms go soggy or break or, or delaminate at all as they do on the ZMR250, for example. However, if you get the G10 version of this, I have seen quite a few people delaminating the arms along here. The G10 simply isn't as strong as carbon. So after a while with a lot of really, really hard crashing, the, the, the arms do tend to delaminate on the G10 version. This is the carbon one, I've never seen it happen. Maybe it has, people will put a comment in the uh, bottom of this video if it has, I'm sure. But the carbon one certainly seems to be very, very strong. Now. Another point I don't really like are these little legs hanging out underneath here. See, look at them. They're not, they don't come like this with the rake on them. That happens when you are just flying a little bit too low with too much speed on and you catch them in the ground. This one fell off because the screw uh, didn't have any Loctite on it and it vibration. I came down, I only had three legs. Um, so I replaced it with a pillar from a ZMR, cut it to length, screwed it on. It's working fine. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's important that I think you uh, make sure those screws are tight. But you know, as I say, um, having this subboard underneath here makes it a bit vulnerable, I suppose. Although I've never seen anyone break one. And I guess they have to have these legs. Although I'd like to have seen sort of a, a curved semicircle or something in there, which is not going to twist back when you have a crash. Because I know someone else who flies a QAV, they have lost quite a few legs or bent screws as a result of just the kind of crashes or, sorry, landings I've been having. Um, so I'm going to go through do the pros and cons of this machine now. You know, what's, what's good and what's not. Well, first of all, as I said, it is strong and it is tough. I have put this thing through so much punishment. Absolutely thrashed it, smashed it into trees, into the ground, into everything I could find. In fact, if you look at the FPV antenna, you can see it's got a hole in it. Um, and it's been on fire and it still flies like a dream. So it is really strong and tough. Full marks for that. Um, and it flies well. It really does fly well. Um, apart from the, the lack of power, as I said, with the gem fans, once you get it propped up right, um, it flies brilliantly. It's lovely to fly. And it can put on a pretty good turn of speed with these bullnose props, I've got to say. It really can honk along. Is, but the only problem being the, the lack of efficiency means limited flight times. Uh, something you have to address, I suppose. Well, it also has excellent backup and support. Brilliant. Um, get FPV 
are a company that uh, has a very good reputation and they certainly have as I say the upgrade path and they've got the support the spare parts you know that's really important with a mini quad and you know I haven't needed any spare parts because it's so tough but if you need spare parts you're going to get them you're going to get the backup support and the ongoing development which is really really important um, which is mean you know again it's upgradable that's another pro you can upgrade it when you get tired of the performance and the standard configuration get those arm extensions um, maybe put some bigger motors on and away you go you've got a real hot rod on your hands now the quality of the machine is without doubt I mean the fiber, the carbon fiber is very very high quality the fittings the screws are the right length the, the aluminium posts seem to be nice and strong and um, everything just oozes quality and that's great because if you're spending a lot of money let's face it these things are bloody dear if you're spending a lot of money you expect to get quality and in this case you do so the value is high it's good value now there's nice integration everything goes together nicely you know it's not file this and cut that because it's made properly um, with the ZMR sometimes you have to file out slots and sometimes the plates don't line up and when you put them together they're a bit twisted this thing is just you know everything goes together nicely everything's got a, there's a place for everything and everything fits nicely into its place um, the only thing that I didn't like this came pre-assembled and these wires here are way too long I mean and got bullets so I'm going to cut those and just solder them direct bullets are just another source of failure and all this extra weight and drag ah, don't need it so if you're building it yourself you probably would wire it direct um, and it comes with a brilliant carrying case. You can't beat the carrying case. Well, if you buy the carrying case, of course, it doesn't come with it. You've got to buy it separate. But it's great because you can throw everything in that case, biff the case in the back of your car, and go flying. And when you get there, you don't think, oh, no, I forgot my antenna, or I forgot a battery, or I forgot this or the other. It all fits in the case. Apart from your radio control transmitter and your video glasses, the whole damn flight side of things fits in the case. Excellent. That, again, makes it a Rolls Royce amongst mini quads. But not, it's not perfect. Absolutely not perfect. Let's look at the downsides. As I said, it's underpowered with stock motors and 5.3 props. That could really do with some attention. I mean, I'm going to perhaps put some sunny skies or some known motors and tiger motors perhaps on here and just see whether it's the motors or what that is causing it to be so lethargic in standard configuration. Um, you can't tilt that FPV camera. As I said, that is a downside unless you're going to fit the arms with the motor tilt if you're just going to fly it in standard configuration you're going to get awfully used to looking at the ground because with a whole lot of tilt on that's all you can see and it's if you're trying to race it's annoying because you come around a corner and you can't see what's ahead and you know um what i'm what i may do with this one actually is take out the board camera and put in one of the many little fpv cameras you can get now that basically have the sony 600 tv line super head guts in them something like this and i might mount that on the board there so i can at least i can tilt it up and I can get some, get a bit of vision of, the, of what's coming ahead of me when I'm flying at a really high angle. But I mean, hey, that's something you can do. I mean, you don't have to put a board camera in this thing. You could do this. So, you know, it's only a fault of the configuration as it is now. Uh, I'll put increasingly using these cameras on my um, mini quad so that I can get some tilt on them and see where I'm going. It's, it's making a big difference to my flying, I've got to say. Now, as I said, the landing gear, I'm not too impressed with those because they're always damn bending if you're doing low passes and catching the ground. Um, but again, that would be a simple fix. Um, the normal battery position, uh, I know a lot of people fly with the batteries out the back here, but I was just so impressed with the way this handled with the battery on the top and the fact that I can go to the bigger batteries that, um, you know, again, you don't have to put your battery there. It's only a recommendation. You can put it on the top. So is it a criticism? Eh, probably not. The only thing, other thing I would say is that I know the G10 frames, as I say, some of them delaminate along here after a lot of really big crashes and bangs. But this isn't the G10 frame. I'm not reviewing the G10, so I can't really say that's a fault with the, glass, or the carbon version. So there you go. That's the pros, the cons, whatever. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some video footage I took of this. I was running actually the Gemfan 5.4s, not these bullnose. So it's not as fast as it will go. It will go faster than that. But I found the Gemfan 5.4s were actually a really good compromise between uh, battery endu or endurance and performance. And I'll probably take these bullnose off and put the 5.4s back on because these just suck too much battery at the moment. So here you go. Have a look at this now. What I will do is I will also link to the team pilot Sharpu. He's flying one of these with the arm extensions and tilt rotor, uh, tilted uh, motors. You will not believe how well that thing performs. So if you're looking to buy a mini quad, I'd say this is a great starting point. You would, you know, none of these mini quads are going to leave you disappointed. They all fly so damn well. So it doesn't matter what you buy. You're not going to be left with buyer's remorse. If you buy a QAV 250, you'll have a great starting, really bulletproof, if you get the carbon one, bulletproof starting point to get into mini quads, well supported, lots of um, upgrade features available. And when you upgrade, you will have what at this stage seems to be the fastest 250 size mini quad on the planet. 
at least if Sharpu's videos are anything to go by. So there you go. Enjoy. If you've got questions, comments, put them on the bottom of this video. Remember, this video you're looking at now is just nano flying. That's just me nano flying, so it's nothing like the full potential of the frame. Uh, but hey, if a nano can fly like this with this frame, it can't be all bad. And uh, so comments on the bottom of the video and any questions the same, I'll try and address them. Meantime, I'll just leave you to watch the video. Bye for now.